Jews should know better than anyone the horrors of racism, oppression and pogroms, of indiscriminate killing of civilians. Israel does not speak for me and it does not speak for many Jews around the world. What has happened in the last week is horrific. The Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has declared his intention to turn Gaza into rubble. One Israeli official said Gaza will eventually turn into a city of tents. There will be no buildings. They're telling us that Israel wants to bomb and to bomb until nothing remains of Gaza. And this is a strip of more than 2.3 million people. Make no mistake, Israel is announcing its intent to commit genocide. So I'm glad to see everyone here. I'm glad to see everyone here to take this kind of stand against these crimes against humanity. But we also have to stand against slanderous claims in our movement. Because in this movement against genocide, against racism, against apartheid, against all of these things which are justified under the term Zionism, again and again, we are told we are anti-Semitic, that we are racist. Because we oppose the state of Israel. In one recent example, the Labour Party in Sydney attempted to ban protests for Palestine on the grounds of anti-Semitism. Shame! And this is because we dare to say we oppose the state of Israel. Well, I'm here to say Israel doesn't represent Jews, and it sure as hell doesn't represent me. We are an anti-racist movement, and the kind of racism that the Nazis and the history of anti-Semitism embody, it is anathema to our movement. Joe Biden has called Hamas's counteroffensive the deadliest day for Jews since the Holocaust. Well, I want to respond to this because to me, the most horrific and sorrowful day for Jews since the Holocaust would have to be the 15th of May, 1948, Nakba Day. Nakba, the Arabic word for catastrophe. On this day, they began the state of Israel which on behalf of all Jews supposedly occupies Palestine to today. Supposedly on behalf of Jews, Israel has turned the Gaza Strip into the world's largest open air prison. But such a horror can only make you think of the Warsaw Ghetto, when Nazis gave Jews an area where they conditioned to a subhuman. That's what the Gaza Strip reminds me of. Supposedly on behalf of Jews, Israel has expelled millions of refugees out of Palestine and millions more internally displaced. Shame! Shame! But such an historic crime makes me think of my own grandmother forced to flee Nazi Germany while the rest of her relatives were murdered. That's what the crimes of Israel makes me think of. Shame! And today, supposedly on behalf, on, on behalf of Jews, Israel is conducting a genocide of Gaza. And the process of establishing and expanding Israel, a similar colonial state, has necessitated genocide since its genesis. It's always been part of the project. So every day since the Nakba has been deadly for Palestinians. Every single day. Thousands of days of oppression and murder. Is it not obvious why this is horrific for Jews as well as Palestinians? Because it is terrible to think such crimes are done in the name of Judaism. It is terrible to think that this has been done in the names of those in my family who were killed in similar acts. So I reject the claim of Zionism, that Israel will right the wrongs of the Holocaust. But more than that, I find it disgusting, I find it sickening to my bones that the tragedy of the Holocaust is weaponized to justify Israel's crimes today. It's sickening. And this is why politicians like Joe Biden, like Benjamin Netanyahu in Israel, or Anthony Albanese in Australia and the Labour Party in Sydney. 
It is not anti-Semitic to demand a free Palestine. It is not anti-Semitic to demand an end to a racist state like Israel. It is not anti-Semitic to look at Israel and reject any claim that its bombs and its tanks and the end that's blood in chores has anything to do with justice for Jews. So it is not Israel that has best learned the lessons of the Holocaust. But I have another point to make. I have one more point to make. The lessons of the Holocaust, they are best learned by the Palestinians and their millions of supporters around the world who reject the lives of Israel, who stand up to its guns, and who face down slander and persecution from the powerful institutions that support and defend Israel's crimes. The Palestinians remind us of the true meaning of never again. They remind us to never again stand by what people are persecuted. The Palestinians remind us to never again believe the lies of so-called civilized governments like our own who stand up Israel or the respectable journalistic outlets who present the oppressor's justification as if it's part of a reasoned policy debate. The Palestinians remind us to never again turn away the refugees our own government trying to paint as villains and lock up at the border. The Palestinians teach us to take part in the international movement to overthrow and smash the injustices that cause them to flee their homes. To stand with those who are trying to survive in the face of bombs and blockade of electricity and food. So if you want to end the inhumanity, the inhumanity that caused the Holocaust, you have to demand the end of the siege on Gaza. But more than that, you have to demand the end to the Israeli state. Because beyond every affront to Judaism that Israel presents, there is a more basic reason that it should end, that Israel should end. And that is that there is no justification for a state that wants to reduce a strip of 2.3 million people to rubble. There is nothing. In the end, it is not really about any of this. It is not about Zionism or Judaism or the Holocaust. There is nothing. There is no justification that can justify this. There is nothing. There is only freedom for Palestine. That is why you have to demand freedom from the river to the sea. We have to demand justice for every last Palestinian, every Palestinian in Gaza, every Palestinian in the occupied West Bank, and every Palestinian refugee scattered across the world, and every Palestinian that has been buried at the hands of Israel. Only then will we honor the words, never again. In our thousands, in our millions, we are all Palestinians. In our thousands, in our millions, we are all Palestinians. In our thousands, in our millions.